Yeah. All right, praise the Lord. We're going to get started, amen, with our Bible study on tonight. We're going to, amen, have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We magnify your most holy name. We thank you, God, for what you have done and what you're going to do. And Father, we pray in the master's name of Jesus that as we study your word, that you would saturate this show in our hearts, that we will not sin against you. Father, I pray, oh God, that as your word illuminates, we pray, oh God, that we see what we've never seen before and open up our understanding to the treasures and mysteries of your word. We thank you right now. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Um, and I'm a little taller than Pastor Johnson. He had to let me uh, go out on an emergency, but um, he was praying, amen, for his safe return. Um, this week. We're going to go, amen, um, directly to the Word of God. We're going to um, uh, um, go to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, verse, beginning at verse 5. Uh, and I'm going to read uh, up to verse 9. Um, it reads, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every Before we can talk about Jesus and the manger and Jesus as a baby, we're going to speak about Jesus as the omnipotent God. Amen. Um, and understand that before we can understand the baby Jesus, we must understand the also God that sacrifices. And so what we're going to do, I man, is going to kind of dive deep into um, what took place and um, we hope we get a better understanding as to um, the reason why Jesus uh, was born, lived, and died for us. And I understand, uh, first of all, that uh, Jesus was God and Philippians 2, chapter 5 through 9 talks about um, Jesus is God. Also in Romans chapter 9 verse 5 talks about him as the blessed God and he also forgave sin and he was totally equal with God. That's in 1 John chapter 5 verse 20. Um, and understand that when we talk about God as the omnipotent God, the omniscient God, the omnipresent God. Um, and so in this particular case, we're going to speak and talk about Jesus, God, right, as a loving God who incarnated himself or wrapped himself in flesh as Jesus, amen, to um, um, bore the sins of the world. Um, understand that um, as we look at this, uh, this particular nativity scene or story or narrative, uh, we need to understand, amen, that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, which was uh, himself. Because if you go to John chapter 1, uh, John chapter 1, verse 1, he talks about uh, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. Mm -hmm. And the word, and here's the preposition uh, that's used in the Greek, the word was God. Mm -hmm. And there's a difference between a God and was God. Amen. It was God, amen, who set the tone. It was God, amen, who who uh, 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 set everything in motion. And so understand that um, before we can talk about Jesus as the baby, let's speak about and talk about God, amen, as in the totality of who he is, mm -hmm. which is um, 
a merciful God, a graceful God. Um, and again, um, there's a term that's generally used when we're talking about both God wrapping himself in flesh, which is incarnated uh, God, um, who is Jesus in, the, um, in, in human terms. And so understand that uh, when we speak about God as Jesus, we're talking about one, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Mm. And see, there's no three sub, there's, there's, they're not separate. They're one in totality, but three um, separate, um, um, what we would call um, separate works. Mm. Um, so understand that it was God, uh, because when he talked about in um, 1 John chapter 5, and we know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God, eternal life. And so, so understand that when we're talking about who God is in his totality and the vastness of God, there are some things that we will not be able to understand. Uh, there are some questions that may be asked that may not be answered. Um, but the bottom line is he's given us in his word everything we need to know about him. Mm. Because when we talk about um, the essence of God, we're speaking about um, God um, as it pertains to um, his life, his death, and the resurrection. Now, we go on, amen, and um, talk about um, his name. He said, you shall call his name Jesus, and he will save his people from their sins. Now, Jesus in Hebrew is Yeshia, which means Jehovah is help, or Jehovah is salvation. And um, as recorded, he, Jesus is in the lineage of Joseph, and he was the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus, who, who, was, who was born Jesus. He came from 42 generations, um, broken down into three groups of 14. Now, I also understand that Jesus is usually not used as a given name in the English speaking world, while his counterparts have long, have a long popularity among people with other language backgrounds such as Spanish or Arabic. Uh, now understand also that this is the only place in the Bible where this particular saying was uh, written, uh, where he saved his people with his sin which means that there was a purpose, that, which means that uh, there was a goal um, affirming that Jesus as the Savior and emphasizing that the name was not selected at random, but based on a heavenly command. Uh, he was given a name with purpose from the Father, and he will save his people from their sin is the purpose. And so when we talk about the name of Jesus, we're not just calling out the name of Jesus just because <clears throat> it sounds great. It sounds wonderful, even though his name is great and his name is wonderful. Mm -hmm. When we call out the name of Jesus, it has to come from within. Mm -hmm. Because when you talk about and call on the name of Jesus, you're talking about the power and the authority of God mm -hmm. in human terms. And when we talk about God in human terms, when we call out his name, not only, not only are we are affirming God the Father, but we are also speaking of Jesus as the Son. Amen. And, as, as, and as we see here, there are many examples which speaks about people who call on the name of Jesus and there were consequences. We know the, the, the seven sons of Seba. Um, they talked about it. They tried to call on this Jesus. And we see that the enemy uh, uh, um, literally um, 
almost to kill them. So understand that when we call in the name of Jesus, you are acknowledging God the Son, I mean God the Father, and Jesus as the Son, which tells me and lets me know that when a lot of people call his name in vain, there will be consequences. There will be consequences. Because this name is authority. This name means power. Um, this name means that um, whatever it is that you're going through, his saving grace, his deliverance, his salvation comes through the name of Jesus. And so while we are calling on, calling on the name of Jesus, we're calling on him to help us through our circumstances. So... Um, we're speaking of God the Father, we're talking about Jesus again, um, the Son. So, when we speak of the name of Jesus, um, it's a name that um, will invoke, it's a name that will um, uh, usually uh, move situations in our lives. Now, Luke in Luke chapter 2, Luke chapter 2, I'm trying to get, uh, Luke chapter 2, uh, we're talking about uh, Jesus uh, as a baby. There came a time in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. The census first took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, so all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. And so Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And therefore in the same country, shepherds living out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night, and behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. And the angel said unto them, Do not be afraid. Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all the people. Mm -hmm. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel and multitude of the heavens hope, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace and goodwill towards men. Now understand, Jesus, this was um, um, this was a, through Mary, this was a virgin birth. Um, and then the, um, a, a virgin birth talks about a supernatural conception to Mary without seed from man. Um, it was a human nature of his mother and the sinless divine nature of um, the father. And so we talk, we talk about the, the virgin birth, which Virginia lets us know that no man was involved in the purpose and the will of God. In other words, we cannot substitute flesh for the spirit. When God has, when, especially when God has a plan and a purpose for our lives. And so what happened was that the Holy Spirit engulfed Mary. And she was impregnated. And at that particular point, um, quite naturally, she had questions. Um, and, uh, quite, and, and, and most brothers do have questions. When, um, I know I would have questions. Um, you know, coming from where I was, where, you know, uh, my wife come up to me and say, well, the Holy Spirit engulfed me. I, I would, uh, 
Even mm -hmm. saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Spirit, I will probably have questions about that. But I also understand the differences between what um, what Mary did and what Zechariah did. Mary accepted the purpose of God in spite and despite of the consequences. Zechariah was a priest. Zechariah was a religious man. Zechariah was a righteous man. And it was Zechariah Zachari who did not believe and who doubted. That tells me that when you are dealing with religious folk, when you're dealing with religious folk, Sometimes we think we know more than what we know mm. instead of accepting it for what it is. Mm. Because a lot of times when God tells us that something's going to take place and something's going to happen, uh, for those of us who've been in the church for eons, we have to see a sign. Mm. Or God will have to rain down thunder. Mm. Or, or God will have to come down himself and whisper it into our ears. Whereas Mary accepted it for what it was. And so that lets us know that in spite of our situations, now understand also that when Mary accepted this, um, she didn't go in the corner and started um, pouting or criticizing. She began to rejoice. She began to rejoice. And she began to um, acknowledge the fact that God has chosen me at such a time as this, God has chosen me um, uh, for this purpose. And so um, Zechariah said to the angel, well, sh shall I know this? For I'm an old man and my wife grows stricken in years. Now he brought his wife in. Most of the times when we're trying to figure out God, we want to bring someone else into the situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And bringing someone else into the situation we try to muddle 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 the water. Mm. Right. We try to we, we, we try to confuse um, God. I mean, we should know better. Mm -hmm. We should know better. God told us to do something. He told us to do this thing, which lets me know that nobody else should be involved. And so understand that. Uh, and Zachariah asked the question, he was a religious man. Uh, um, the angel came down and said, well, um, because of your unbelief. Now, many times um, throughout this, 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 this holiday season, um, we, we, we talk about the joyous occasion of the birth of Christ Jesus, and we speak about um, the many things that took place with the birth of Jesus and understand also that when we're talking about um, um, the, the birth of Christ Jesus that it was the grace of God uh, who was upon uh, Mary but you also have to understand um, also that uh, when you have the grace of God in your life it's going to cost you something Mm -hmm. You have the grace of God in your life. It's going to cost you. And, even, and although Mary uh, was enthusiastic and she was happy and Mary was uh, joyful about this occasion, she did not understand the consequences of favor. Many times when God has favor on us, there are consequences involved. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily jumping and shouting and, and, and speaking in tongue and say, oh Lord, I thank you. Because when you have great, when you have favor with God, also understand he has placed a stamp on you and that stamp is seen by the enemy. Mm -hmm. In other words, you've been marked by God and, and the enemy sees the mark. And now, He's going to try to destroy you based on your favor with God. And so understand, amen, that um, when um, Jesus was born, uh, he, um, he was in a manger. Uh, the three shepherds came 
um, to um, worship um, Jesus in the manger. And um, oftentimes when we um, talk about um, um, Jesus in the manger, um, this particular manger was a trough, a fodder rather, for animals. And so it was where the animals would come to feed and to eat. Right. And that's where amen. Jesus was born in a trough. Yes. And many times, amen, we talk about and we rejoice, but we don't really understand the purpose and the will. Now, the trough was, I'm quite sure, dirty. Yes. The trough was filthy. Yes. They were in a barn. They were smelling. <laughs> you understand, amen, that they were with the animals. Mm -hmm. And yet, she gave birth to the Savior. Amen. When Jesus was laid in the manger, the trough, mm -hmm. where the animals were feeding, yes. understand that that was where the animals were fed, but Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. Do we know what the name Bethlehem means? House of bread. Yes. Mm -hmm. It meant house of bread. House of bread. Which tells us, even in a manger, he is still feeding our soul. Mm. I like that. Mm. He is still feeding, even as a baby. Yes. He has shown us the humility that it takes for us yes. to humble ourselves to an all-powerful God. Mm. Also understand that he's teaching us to humble ourselves, that when he feeds us, we don't take for granted what he has given us through the provisions. Mm -hmm. And even as a baby in the manger, he is teaching us humility. Mm -hmm. Because many of us, when we are, but he's teaching us the humility that it takes for us to know that it is God in his awesomeness yeah. that, te that, that lets us know that even as a baby in a filthy, dirty, Nasty, yes. smelling, yes. manger. Yes. Okay. Come on. He is still the cleanest thing yes. All right. All right. in that manger. In that manger. Make it plain. He is still the awesome God. Yes. He is still the loving God. Yes. He is still the merciful God. Yes. He is still the graceful God. Even in the manger. Even in the manger. So when he went to Bethlehem, so when he was born in Bethlehem, that is symbolic of the bread. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus is the bread. Right. Bread of life. Yes, it is. And many of us are, need, are, are um, when we talk about Jesus in the manger, we talk about, um, we don't really emphasize and know um, the, the, the paradox of Jesus in a manger because we oftentimes talk about um, 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 as a manger and we skip on to something else but we need to play, pay close attention to his birth in a manger because after all there is no room at the end yes absolutely there's no room at the end and so oftentimes when we're talking about the humility of Christ and, and Mary and, and Joseph, um, they wasn't complaining. Uh, uh, they wasn't uh, antagonistic about uh, where their baby was going to be born. As long as they had a place for this baby to be born, they were okay with it. Yeah. Yeah. In other words, they accepted any and everything that God had for them. They had everything as, as far as um, Jesus was concerned. He was walked, he was wrapped in swaddling clothes. The, the cloth that was used was um, used to keep his limbs straight. Mm -hmm. um, the, the cloth that was used uh, kept his muscles um, from bending out of place, mm -hmm. um, and so that signified. As the, as the cloth was wrapped around his body, 
God wrapped flesh around himself mm -hmm. to let us know and, and get us to see and to understand he is still God. Yes. He is still God. Amen. He wrapped himself as a baby in the, in the cloth, but he also wrapped himself in flesh yes. to allow us to see him yes. in his glory. Yes. Because a lot of times when we talk about Jesus wrapped in swapped in clothes, we don't understand the sacrifice that it took for uh, 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 God to send his son down for the sins of the world. Mm -hmm. And so understand that when, he, when we talk about the manger, we talk about the stable, we talk about um, the lack thereof. Um, that, again, lets us know that we ought to be, um, what did Paul say? Whatever state I'm in, I am content. And when Paul talked about that, he's not talking about um, that every time we're in a situation that God's going to get us out of something. He's talking about whatever situation that I am in, Lord, allow your will to be done in my life. Amen. Mary and Joseph, amen, put Jesus in this manger. It wasn't criticizing. Look how dirty, nasty, and filthy this manger was. As long as my baby is healthy, Lord, thank you. You. Amen. We need to be thankful for the little things. Amen. There's a lot of things that we can take from just Jesus being born in the manger. Amen. There are many things that we can take from Jesus being wrapped in swaddling and clothes. There are many things that we can take from the shepherds coming to worship a baby. Amen. Because when the angels told them to go to Bethlehem to worship, to, to, to worship this baby, uh, uh, um, also understand that the enemy was on the trail too. Because in, the enemy wanted to kill. But God always has a purpose for his people. And that's why even the shepherds, uh, even the shepherds, as they came to worship him and, and give him gifts, that lets us know that when we come to worship the name of Jesus, we are to give everything that we have. Amen. Amen. We are to give him our first fruits. Yes. When we come to the house of the Lord to worship him, we give him all the praise and all the glory. Amen. We don't come in with an attitude, we leave the attitudes at the door. Amen. And we come in with a fresh attitude to say, Lord, Whatever you have for me, allow your will to be done. Again, there's a lot of things we can take from this. Um, the shepherd's coming to worship Jesus. The shepherd's coming to, to, to present gifts. The shepherd's coming uh, um, to acknowledge that he is the Savior. Um, based on the, the, the angels and based on uh, even the enemies. And, uh, Jesus also, also, God also used the enemy to promote the glory of Jesus, the glory of God. Mm -hmm. Because if it wasn't for the enemy, um, there wouldn't be the acknowledgement of the Savior being born. Mm -hmm. And so understand that there's a reason why the enemy is on your trail. Mm -hmm. yes, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not going to the preach. I'm sorry. There's a reason. <laughs> hey, man, there's a reason. There's a reason why the enemy is on your trail. There's a reason why when you're birthed with God's purpose that the enemy is giving you everything that he has mm -hmm. to do against you. And once that purpose is born, once that purpose is, 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 is birthed, that's when God himself will get the glory. Mm -hmm. um, also understand, um, now, um, now, um, I also understand there is a soteriological principle um, when you talk about uh, the birth of Christ. 
Um, the sociological principle is a theological term used to expound on the salvation of Christ. Uh, the, so the sociological principle that is used, that um, Luke used in this particular narrative speaks of the salvation of the people. Mm -hmm. There are different types of concepts of, uh, of salvation that is explained in the Bible. But in this particular case, Luke used a, search, a sociological principle to explain the purpose of Jesus and why he was born. <coughs> in this, that's where we um, begin to understand the social, uh, political, and economic uh, concerns of the people. Now, the sociological principle talks about Jesus was born of a virgin birth. He was both human and divine. He is God. He is Savior of the world. And he is the only name by which we can be saved. Now, the, 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 the sociological principle in this particular case speaks of salvation as it pertains to saving from sin and its consequences. So when we talk about salvation in this particular sense, we're speaking of Jesus, his perfect, perfect <coughs> brother, being fulfilled, and that the world in itself will be saved from sin. Not, we're not talking about the deliverance of, from something or from someone. That is also salvation. But we're talking about the primary purpose of Jesus, which is to save his people from sin. Yes. That is the primary right. purpose. Amen. I have a question. What is our primary purpose since we have been born again? Mm. Right. Because right. many times we are born again but we do not understand our purpose. Jesus' purpose was to be born and to fulfill the prophecy that was written in the word of God. Um, also understand that when we talk about a sociological principle, we're talking about salvation that is not for just for the poor, but for all those who are struggling, which is all of us. When we talk about salvation, we're talking about salvation is not just for poor folks. Salvation is not just for those of us who are down and out. Salvation is not just for, 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 for us who don't have a job or whatever. Salvation is for all because the last time I checked, there are some wealthy folks who are committing suicide. Come on now. Come on. There are some wealthy folks amen, who, 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 who don't know uh, what's going on in life. Yes. They're actually losing their mind. That's true. And yet, because because of um, their pride, they refuse to give in to the promises of God. No. And when I'm talking about the promises of God, do you not know he will keep you in perfect peace well, that's the book. That's when the book. your mind is, as this is Isaiah, he will keep you in perfect peace when your mind is stayed on him. That's the book. Because a lot of, many of us, no, all of us need the peace yes. that surpasses understanding. Yes. 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 Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me, bless his holy name. Yes. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget yes. not yes. his benefits. Yes. And yes. then David goes on to talk about the benefits of God. Yes. So there's a reason why Jesus was born in a manger. Yeah. Because through being born in that stinking, nasty, <laughs> dirty manger, yeah, exactly. peace was acquired yeah. for me. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. In that stinking, dirty, nasty manger, right. that love was exhibited for me. That's right. His mercy was exhibited for me. Yeah. It was the grace of God that was exhibited through me. So we can talk about the stinking, nasty, dirty manger. 
But thank God for that stinking, nasty, dirty manger. Because if it had not been for that manger, yes. I would not understand the peace yes. of God. Yes. And that's why salvation is so important yes. in our lives yes. today. Yes. Because a lot of times, amen, we think we got it going on mm -hmm. until we find out we don't have it going on. No. No. And the person that's going to show you is not yes. God, it is the enemy. Yes. Yes. It is the enemy that will show you you don't have it all going on. No. I don't care how anointed we think we are. Yes. Make it right. We, unless we understand the stinking, nasty, yes. dirty manger, right. we won't be able to understand who God is yes. right. in our lives. Right. And so that's why salvation is so important. And Luke illustrated the fact that it was Jesus. Now understand that with um, Luke writing this, he, he, he detailed all of the, the nuances and, um, and all of the detail um, that was uh, uh, um, um, uh, with this narrative. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get a word out with this narrative. Now, Luke wrote this, um, and, he's and he was very meticulous in his writing. And he was also um, someone who um, was very detailed. Because a lot, many of the things that were mentioned in Luke was not men mentioned in the other synoptic gospels. Mm -hmm. Matthew and Mark mm -hmm. wrote one thing. Yeah. And then uh, it was Luke. Understand also that because Luke, this blessed Luke so much, Matthew and Mark were Jews. Right. Luke was a Gentile. Right. Make it right. That's why Luke rejoiced when writing this narrative because he felt that it was Jesus. Because many times when you've been born into the faith, and what I mean by born into the faith, I mean by... Uh, some of us have been born in the church, yes. but don't know nothing about the church. Oh. And many of the Jews were born, many of the Jews were called Jews by name, yes. but they could not and did not understand what it took to be a real Jew. Mm -hmm. And so many times, when when someone who was out of the loop mm -hmm. begins to experience the power of God. They begin to rejoice much more because right. they're thinking, what have I been missing all this time? All right. like and for many of us who've been in the church all our lives, we're saying, is there something else to this? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, all right. I like that. That's why it was very important for Luke, when he wrote this particular gospel, that it blessed him. Now, I mean, like I said, I'm going, I'm, I'm kind of. Ran off. Yeah, but right. but it's the good. fact that Jesus meant so much to Luke. Yes. And Luke wrote this down, indicating that all of this took place and the Jews cannot see this. Now, going into the, the story, uh, Jesus was of Nazareth, but he was born in Bethlehem. And being being of Nazareth, um, Nazareth was a, an obscure, obscure town tucked away in the hill. In other words, let me use 21st century vernacular. Nazareth was the hood. Mm -hmm. All right, make it right. Come on, very Come cool. On. Very <laughs> Nazareth was the hood. As a matter of fact, his own disciples said, yeah. can anything good come thing. good? Come out of that. What else to do? And Jesus said, how, well, I'm just, I'm just using my mm -hmm. vernacular. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, how dare you, bro? You know, mm -hmm. look at you, Nathaniel. You don't even understand what's going on. So understand that it does not take a rocket scientist to get us to see that God can use 
anyone. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone. Yeah. God can use yeah. anyone. Yeah. Jesus grew up in the hood. Yeah. All right. Not many people want to mention that or know that, but Jesus grew up in Nazareth, which was the hood. Mm. Jesus grew up in Compton. Mm. All right, all right, all right. Let's use the 21st century. Jesus, he grew up in Compton. Also understand that Jesus worked. Yes, indeed. He worked. He he worked. Say, he say that again, please. Jesus worked. He was a carpenter. So in order for us to experience the death of Christ, we must also experience the life experiences of Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons why he was born in a manger is to get us to see that we're going to have to deal with life. Yes, indeed. We must deal with life. Amen. Because Jesus, yes, he was in the temple and he was asking questions to uh, 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 the teachers and the scribes at that time, but Jesus was only 12 years old. However, the Bible also talks about that he worked as a carpenter. Yes, it does. And so understand that, yes, he could, God could have came down and just instantaneously saved the people, but he wanted us to see that as there were steps taken for Jesus as he was growing up, there must be steps taken with us so that we can experience life. Mm -hmm. Because many times we want the good things in life, but nobody wants to experience the, the, the negative thing. Now understand that when we talk about Nazareth, we're talking about uh, 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 a particular location. Um, that was more so lacking. Um, and so I believe that um, our reputation, status, and upbringing, or our neighborhood, our lifestyle, does not, it, um, has not to be, I forgot the saying, you can take me out of the hood. <laughs> you can take me out of the hood, but you can't take the hood out of me. Which lets me know that even as a baby, Jesus didn't take no stuff. No. He didn't no. take any stuff. And so understand the fact that since there's a lot of uh, nuggets that you can take from this, and I apologize because I was I was trying to get all the nuggets together, but Understand that even as a baby, Jesus understood his purpose. Even as a baby, he would go up to the temple and he would ask questions. Yes. Uh, as, an, as, a, as an adolescent. Mm -hmm. um, and when his parents went out to search for him, yeah. um, um, uh, and Mary said, well, Where you been, boy? And Jesus said, Well, I'm. No, have we said that? Oh. Uh, 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 come on. So the Bible says she pondered all of these things in her heart. What does that tell me? Yeah. That tells me that Mary also and knew the purpose of Jesus. Yeah. Which tells me also that she was a praying woman. Yeah. And she did not interfere. Yeah. with God's purpose yeah. in the life of Jesus. Yeah. Because many times when we see an adolescent, when we see someone who's young, we don't really understand, the first thing we want to do is chastise. Mm -hmm. right. But if we are praying and asking God and seeking God for guidance and direction, yeah. the Spirit will let us know. Yeah. Yeah. And when we are new babes in Christ, many, most of the time, many of us are novices when it comes to spirituality. Yes, mm -hmm. we are. And it is up to those of us who are seasoned yes. and experienced mm -hmm. to teach those who are novices. Right. right. And not to necessarily crack down brown beef right. and yes. criticize and ridicule right. them that are coming up as babies. Amen. And so that, that illustration lets me know that even while we are dealing with issues in the church, 
Mary did not take the switch and belt and start beating Jesus because she Jesus did. gave her mind. Right. Because she was a praying woman. Right. Yes. Because she understood she the understood. purpose of God. Yes, she, did. she understood that, remember Mary, you was once young too, and you had this boy, baby Jesus. Right. Yes. And so now that you are mature and a little older, now she, she began, the, the, God began to open up her eyes yes. and say, now I understand. Right. But many times as novices, we don't understand the things of God. Mm -hmm. Many times as novices, we don't understand um, the nuances of spirituality and the, and the nuances of what it takes to live a saved and sanctified life. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's important for us that we have a praying spirit and we allow the Holy Spirit to show us what needs to happen in someone's life and in the purpose of someone's life. Because a lot of times, we can be the ones to destroy that individual. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because of lack of prayer life. Mm -hmm. And Mary, because she's a praying mother, understood the purpose of Jesus. Now, understand also um, that when you talk about um, Jesus, when you talk about um, um, how Jesus um, was born. Many times, many times, um, and I want to say this and I'm, I'm closing. Paul said that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. That's what Paul said that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. This particular word, know, comes from a Greek word, negoskos, which talked about an intimate relationship. When Paul talks about that I may know him, he's talking about an intimate relationship with Christ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Many times when we are talking about the Savior and many times when we are thinking about uh, our situation in an intimate relationship there is give and take. Mm -hmm. I pray I listen. Mm -hmm. He talks. Right. Oh, right. Say it again. Mm -hmm. I pray. I listen. He talks. Right. Okay. There are other times where the Spirit would then give me something to say. Mm -hmm. I say that to say, in order for us to understand the reason for the season, we must have an intimate relationship with Jesus. We must have an intimate relationship because when we don't don't have an intimate relationship, it shows. When we don't have an intimate relationship, now when I have, I have an intimate relationship with my wife, which if I, if I have a relationship with her, there should be traits and characteristics that let you know mm -hmm. yeah. that he cares for her. Mm -hmm. When we have Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we ought not do anything just because. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. We must have an intimate, right. which tells me that the traits and the characteristics of Christ should be in us. Yeah. Right. That comes from Galatians chapter 5 right. when he speaks about the what? The fruits of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. right. yes. Because when we have the fruits of the Spirit, we have the traits and the characteristics of Christ. This is not why we are dying with him. This is what this is when we are living yes. with right. him. Yes. Because when Paul talks about the power of his resurrection, yes. Paul is talking about, I want to experience death as he experienced death. Yes. 
But when Jesus was born in a nasty, stinking, dirty <laughs> manger, All right. Jesus is saying, I want you to have life right. and have it what? More, More abundant. Yes, yes. Which means that we must experience the life of Christ in order for us to have an intimate relationship with him. Um, one last thing. The shepherds. Um, many times many time the shepherds were regarded as thieves. Uh, they're the, the, the only people lower than lepers. Uh, religious people snubbed them and ignored them. You're right. Um, the shepherds. Yes. Um, also understand um, that they were despised because they were unable to attend services and to keep the ceremonial, ceremonial of washing and cleaning. Mm -hmm. Which tells me and lets me know that God don't need to use religious folks to get his purpose across. You say no. that. You write about it. God doesn't need no. us church folk to get into that. his business mm -hmm. and to meddle in his business. God can take someone off the street, Say that clean them up, yes. use them yes. for his glory, for his glory. and ain't nothing we can do about it. I like that. Right because about a lot it. of times when, we, when, 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 when religious folks get caught up in the things of God, many times we mess it up. You yeah. We mess it up. Amen. But in order for us to have an understanding, now religious folks are those of us who are self-righteous and think that we know all. But the Bible talks about humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will do what? Exalt you in due time. In other words, you must come in with a humble spirit. You must come in with the type of spirit to say, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. I'm, I'm going to close on that note. Praise the Lord. I thank God again for Pastor Jonathan for allowing me to share with you once again. Um, I begin to like him more and more because um, he, he just you know, <laughs> <laughs> I still love him. I still love him. But, I'm, uh, but, but thank God for him. We pray for his safe return. Um, and uh, I believe that uh, We're going to conclude with our uh, Bible I pray that you got an understanding. I pray that uh, someone uh, will, uh, will seek Christ the Savior. Not as someone who can give you something. This is, um, Robert Kennedy said, ask not what you can do for you. Ask not what you can do for you. Ask not what your country can do for you, but what your country, but what you can do for your country. There it is. So I'm praying that as you allow the Holy Spirit to continue to be with you, God, and direct your path, that you will have a blessed day in the Lord. We thank you. We praise you and magnify your name. Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.